Continuing with our discrete probability distributions, we will now look at a binomial distribution. In our last set of lectures, we looked at a bivariate distribution. Bivariate means two variables. Binomial is referring to two possible outcomes. A binomial distribution models random variables with only two possible outcomes, success or failure. So for instance, the flip of a coin. Success would be the side that you are rooting for. So let's say you call heads, that would be a success. Tails would be a failure, at least in this example. What are the qualities of a binomial distribution? There are only two possible outcomes, success or failure for each trial. For every flip of the coin, you either get heads or tails. In this case, it was tails. The experiment is based on counting events, or trials. How many times do we flip the coin? One, two, three, ten, a hundred, a thousand. The probability of success, p, and the probability of failure, one minus p, does not change from trial to trial. This being a fair coin, the probability of heads or tails is always 0.5. In this case, still tails. And the fourth property of a binomial experiment is that the trials are independent. In other words, no flip of the coin affects the probability for any other flip of the coin. I'm using a coin because it's a clear, simple example of a binomial distribution. However, even though a coin has a 0.5 probability for either side, we could use this same probability if the probability of success is different than the probability of failure. For instance, in the example for sales calls that we've looked at previously, you either make a sale or you do not. The number of sales that you make per sales call is usually around 10%. The probability of success is 0 0.10. The probability of a failure is 0 0.90, but we could still use this same binomial distribution. Returning to our business of the week, Dante is going to go into the books and find out sales records for appetizers at the Divine Comedy Store. And here's what he learns. When a customer visits the Divine Comedy Store, the customer will either purchase an appetizer or not. Dante knows from past experience reviewing sales records that the probability that any one customer will make a purchase is 0.30. Three customers, Virgil, Beatrice, and Bernard, come to the Divine Comedy Store one evening. What is the probability that two and exactly two of them will purchase an appetizer? Let's make sure that this is, in fact, a binomial experiment. First, are there only two possible outcomes? Yes, the customer will either order or not order an appetizer is the outcome based upon the counting of events. Yes, we are trying to count two out of the next three events. Does the probability remain the same from trial to trial? Yes, the probability is always going to be a 0 0.30. That was derived from looking at sales figures. And number four, are the trials independent? Now this one is tricky. The binomial distribution assumes that trials are independent, and those trials are independent if one trial does not influence the next. So if these three customers come in and sit separately, then yes, this would be independent. However, if these three, three people come in and sit together, it is no longer an independent event because the likelihood of you ordering or not ordering an appetizer would depend upon whether others at the table had already ordered something. If someone volunteers to order onion rings for the table, you, although you might have ordered, will not because someone else has already done it. That makes this dependent and something that we couldn't do with our binomial distribution. It should come as no surprise that Microsoft Excel has a function specifically for binomial distributions. I've created a spreadsheet that we can use to calculate probabilities 
using a binomial distribution. And we're going to look at that in our next video.